very warm welcome to all our viewers. You must be watching this program on your phone, TV or a laptop. But have you wondered how it is possible to telecast a program and it can be viewed simultaneously by many viewers and in different parts of the country? How is this possible? Your near and dear ones in any part of the globe are just a call away. Was this possible few years back? The answer is no. Now, we are globally connected by several sources such as television, internet and telephone transmitters, etc. All these are mainly based on the physics of electromagnetic waves. We have already seen that a magnetic field changing with time gives rise to an electric field. But since symmetry is so powerful in physics, so you should be asking whether this induction can occur in opposite sense also? That is, can a changing electric field produce a magnetic field? And the answer is yes, it can. This question was very well answered by James Clerk Maxwell. He also rectified the inconsistency in Ampere's circuital law by adding an extra term called displacement current. The extensive study of electromagnetic waves is mainly attributed to him only. In today's program, we are going to study about these waves in detail and focus on their important features in vacuum and medium. We will first discuss the need of displacement current and its consequences. And then we will move on to the description of electromagnetic waves. So let's begin. On the screen, you can see an image of Scottish physicist James Clerk Maxwell. He was a child prodigy who studied at Edinburgh and Cambridge University. He published his first scientific paper at the age of just 14 years. Maxwell's greatest achievement was the unification of laws of electricity and magnetism into a consistent set of equations which is now known as Maxwell's equations. From these, he arrived at the most important conclusion that light is an electromagnetic wave. After knowing these interesting facts about Maxwell, let's study the concept of displacement current. So viewers, tell me, does an electrical current produce any field around it? Yes, you are right. It produces a magnetic field around it. But Maxwell showed that for symmetry and logical consistency, a changing electric field must also produce a magnetic field. But why is this effect so important? It is important because it explains the existence of radio waves, gamma and visible light and also other forms of electromagnetic waves. However, we will discuss these components in detail in the next program. So to understand how electric field gives rise to a magnetic field, we will consider the process of charging of a capacitor. I will first apply the Ampere's circuital law on various types of surfaces. To start with, let's first write the Ampere's circuital law in general. It is given as the closed line integral of magnetic field is equal to the mu naught times current passing through the closed surface. Now let's first write Ampere's circuital law for a point P outside the capacitor. And as you can see in this figure, the closed loop is of radius R. So this equation becomes closed integral of B into 2 pi R is equal to mu naught into i. Here B is the magnetic field at point P and dl is 2 pi r which is length of this loop. It is the current passing through this loop. So magnetic field can be calculated and it will be non-zero. Magnetic field being a vector quantity should have a direction also. So can our viewers mark the direction of this field? Yes, the magnetic field will be directed along the circumference of the circular loop. What about the magnitude then? 
will it be constant or variable? Yes, it will be constant in magnitude. Now, let us apply the same law, but in a different surface. But remember that it has the same boundary. And what is the boundary? This is the boundary. Now, you may be confused that these are different shapes, but we are saying same boundary. This can be understood by a very simple statement that the loop from where the current enters, this is same. And it does not matter that the loop extends beyond this, like the one which is like a pot. We are only going to focus on the circular part from where the current enters. Now, I hope it will be clear to our viewers. Now, let us again write Ampere circuital law for this pot like surface. And in this equation, the magnetic field B and perimeter of the boundary remains the same. But what about the current term on the right hand side? Is it still the same? The obvious answer is no. As our viewers can see, current does not pass through. It only enters but does not come out from the other side. So, this current term is 0. Let us see one more type of surface to identify this inconsistency. This time, the surface considered is like a tiffin, but the boundary remains the same here also. That is a circular loop with radius r. In this case, the current passing through the loop is again 0, which means magnetic field at point P must be 0. But do you see the contradiction in the calculation? When magnetic field is calculated in the first case, it is non-zero. But when calculated by the other way, it is zero. But is that not possible? There must be some term that we are missing out. And the missing term should be such that it gives the same magnetic field at point P irrespective of the type of surface that we are using. Let us try to guess the missing term. It is actually quite simple. Look at this figure very carefully. Can you see anything which is passing through this surface S? Yes, you guessed it right. It is the electric field. Can we calculate the magnitude of this electric field? Well, the electric field due to charge sheet is already known to us from the electrostatics. And what should it be? It will be sigma upon epsilon naught, where sigma is the surface charge density and is equal to Q by A. And the flux of this electric field by Gauss's law will be given by E into A. Now, the current in terms of charge Q is given as I is equal to dQ by dt. And using this term, the rate of change of electric flux d phi e by dt is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times dq by dt. So, it becomes i is equal to epsilon naught times d phi e by dt and this is what the missing term is. If this term of current is added, then there will be no contradiction in the value of magnetic field B. The value of B will now be same everywhere. It will now not depend on the type of surface we have chosen for calculating the magnetic field. After rectifying the contradiction, let us now define the two current that is conduction current and displacement current. Conduction current is the current carried by the conductors due to the flow of charges. The current due to changing electric field is the displacement current and sometimes referred to as Maxwell's displacement current also. Let us see the electric and the magnetic fields inside the plates of capacitor with the help of a diagram. In this figure, our viewers can clearly see the directions of the electric and the magnetic field 
in a parallel plate capacitor. Magnetic field is perpendicular to the direction of the current. But can you identify the direction of electric field? Yes, electric field is from positive to the negative side of the plate. And the direction of electric current is already known to us from the previous chapters. Maxwell then generalized his idea of displacement current. He stated that the source of magnetic field is due to the conduction electric current and the time rate of change of electric field between the plates of the capacitor. So precisely it can be said that in a circuit total current will be the sum of the conduction current and the displacement current which mathematically means that I is equal to IC that is the conduction current plus ID which is the displacement current. This means that outside the capacitor plates we have only conduction current and displacement current will be zero. Inside the capacitor there is no conduction current and only the displacement current exists. After discussing this in so much of detail, now we have a modified Ampere's circuital law. This law has the same form but with a difference and that difference is the addition of an extra term called displacement current. Mathematically, the law will now be given by closed integral of B dot DL is equal to mu naught IC that is the conduction current plus mu naught and displacement current which is epsilon naught into d phi E by dt. This equation is known as Ampere Maxwell law. Here the viewers may feel that what is the difference between the conduction and the displacement current? Well, it has the same physical effects as the conduction current. Can both conduction and displacement current coexist? I think this has already been answered. Yes, they may exist in different parts of the same circuit. All the laws of electricity and magnetism were brought together by Maxwell and made one complete and a beautiful theory, the theory of electromagnetism, which includes only four equations. We may question whether the equations are true or false and this is answered by doing experiments and a countless number of experiments have proven that Maxwell's equations are correct. Let us see these equations one by one. The first equation is what you have already studied in electrostatics which is E dot dA is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times the charge. And this is the Gauss's law in electricity. The second equation is Gauss's law in magnetism. Do you remember this equation? Yes, this is same as the first one. And this equation means that magnetic monopoles do not exist. Moving on further, we will now see the third and the fourth equation. The third equation is also familiar and is known as Faraday's law. This is equal to E dot dl, the closed integral of E dot dl is equal to minus d phi b by dt. The last equation is the one we studied in today's program which is Ampere Maxwell law. B dot dl is equal to mu naught ic that is the conduction current plus mu naught epsilon naught d phi e by dt. You would be surprised to know that these four fundamental equations of Maxwell explain a diverse range of phenomenon. Starting from why do compass needle point in north to why a vehicle starts only when we turn on the ignition key and many more day to day phenomenon and devices that we use. Also solving these equations we get to see the existence of electromagnetic wave. Now, we are going to discuss the electromagnetic waves in detail, so let us get started. On your screen, a picture of Heinrich Rudolf Hertz is displayed. He was a German physicist 
who showed that James Clerk Maxwell's theory of electromagnetism was correct. He said that light and heat are electromagnetic radiations. He was the first to broadcast and receive radio waves. He produced electromagnetic waves, sent them through space and measured their wavelength and speed. It was a pioneering discovery in the field of physics. He also discovered photoelectric effect accidentally while working on electromagnetic waves. And this opened the window for the world of quantum mechanics. When we say electromagnetic wave, the first thing that comes to our mind is how are these waves produced? Can stationary or charges in uniform motion produce these waves? The answer is no. But why? The reason is electromagnetic waves will have both electric and magnetic fields. However, stationary charges produce only electrostatic fields and charges in uniform motion produces constant magnetic field. Well, electromagnetic waves are produced by accelerating or oscillating charges. And this is an important result of Maxwell's theory. At this point of time, I have a very important question to ask. Can we predict that light is an electromagnetic wave? Let's see if it is possible. This can simply be proven by taking AC circuit in which current will oscillate at the frequency of visible light. We may take light of any color, but it is practically possible to have current with such high frequency? The obvious answer is no. We have a maximum frequency of current oscillation at 10 raised to the power 11 hertz only. So for this experimental demonstration, we have to move to this frequency range. Only radio wave region can be demonstrated experimentally. Let's now study the nature of electromagnetic waves. The first and the foremost feature of electromagnetic waves is that electric and magnetic field vectors are perpendicular to each other. And can you think of a possible argument to this? Yes, you understood it right. It will be appropriate to say it from our previous discussion of displacement current and from the diagram it is clearly visible that electric and magnetic fields are perpendicular to each other. Let us now try to write the equations of the electric and the magnetic field. Electric field E is equal to E naught sin Kz minus omega t. From the equation, we can see that electric field acts along the positive x-axis, magnetic field along the positive y-axis. Can you identify the direction of propagation of the wave? Yes, you got it right. It is along positive z-axis. From the diagram, can you see if there is any phase difference between the electric and the magnetic field? It's pretty evident that there is no phase difference between these two vectors as they achieve their maxima and minima simultaneously. However, they are in perpendicular planes. You may be curious to know the terms k and omega. You have already studied these in class 11th also. k is equal to 2 pi by lambda and it is called as the wave vector or the propagation vector. The direction of k gives the direction of wave propagation. And the speed of the wave propagation is given by omega by k. I have a simple task for our viewers at this point. Try to find mathematically how we get the speed of wave propagation as omega by k. Moving on to the next feature, by Maxwell's equations, the magnitude of the electric 
and the magnetic field vectors are related as B naught is equal to E naught upon C and the C is speed of light. The speed of light in vacuum C is equal to 1 upon under root mu naught into epsilon naught and this is the speed in vacuum or in free space that I just told you. Now we will discuss some more features of electromagnetic waves. To begin with, electromagnetic waves are self-sustaining oscillations of electric and magnetic fields. This means that no material medium is required by E and B for their oscillation. Electromagnetic wave travels fastest in free space, but we can calculate its speed in a medium also. The expression of the speed or the velocity of light in a medium, it is given by V is equal to 1 upon under root mu into epsilon. Here, mu is the permeability of the medium and epsilon is the permittivity of the same medium. This implies that velocity of light depends on the electric and the magnetic properties of the medium. Another question arises here, which is very important. Do electromagnetic waves carry energy and momentum like other waves? The answer is yes, they do. This is already known to us from the previous chapters that electric and magnetic fields have energy density in free space. Can you recall the amount of this energy density? I leave it up to the viewers to look for the expression of these energy density. Now let's see how much momentum will be transferred to a surface. Now, you may ask whether the surface where radiations are incident is reflecting or absorbing. So, the momentum will be different for different surface. I'll tell you one expression and you'll have to find the other. The magnitude of total momentum delivered to a completely absorbing surface is P is equal to U by C. Here, U is the total energy transferred to the surface in any time t. But what if the surface is completely reflecting? Our viewers should try to find the answer to this question. Let us define one more term that is radiation pressure. It is the pressure exerted by a wave onto a surface as it carries energy and momentum. Now let me ask you a question for better understanding of this term radiation. When sun shines on your hand, electromagnetic wave is being absorbed. But can you feel the pressure being exerted on it? Okay, so let's take it this way. When sun shines on your hand, you feel the energy being absorbed from the electromagnetic waves. And why? Because your hand get warm. In 1903, the American scientists Nichols and Hull were able to measure the radiation pressure of this visible light. And you would be surprised to know that it was found to be of the order of 7 into 10 raised to the power minus 6 Newton per meter square. So now you can understand that momentum transferred is extremely small and you do not feel the pressure. From today's discussion, we can infer that in places where electricity is flowing, electromagnetic waves are inevitably generated. For example, typical household electrical appliances generate electromagnetic waves with a frequency of 50 to 60 hertz. Electromagnetic waves are transmitted and received by antennas. Antennas are used in many applications such as wireless communication, radar system, radio astronomy, medicine and security scanners. Research is being carried out to improve these antennas and make the transmission without losses. Moreover, electrical devices like microwave ovens and mobile phones generate electromagnetic waves. 
these waves are called microwaves. Electromagnetic waves are present everywhere in the environment but are invisible to humans. Electromagnetic waves play a vital role in day to day life. They can be natural as well as man made electromagnetic fields such as electric fields produced by thunderstorms and magnetic field of earth that helps the magnet to align in north south direction. Besides natural sources, electromagnetic waves are generated by humans and this will be discussed in detail in the next program. Till then, our viewers should try to find more applications of these waves. With this, I will take your leave. Happy learnings and thank you.